What's going on? This is David W. Williams, also known as Dom and Dave. And if you've ever wanted to um, kind of understand how put plays are executed in some of the analysis of a put play, we're going to go ahead and go into it right now. I want to give you a heads up. Uh, we're running a special on the highest paid part-time job and award options training course this week only. That course is going to be $100. After this week is over, that course is going to probably jump up times five. So if you're interested in that, you want to go ahead and get into it. So if you've ever wanted to kind of get the understanding of a put play in the options market and kind of understand what is the analysis of a put play before we go ahead and execute it, we're going to go ahead and get into it. And so we're going to kind of get you to understand what are we thinking before we actually get into the play and then kind of how we're looking at the play and kind of how we're managing the trade as time goes on, right? So we're looking at a company called Snowflake, right? And their ticker is SNOW, right? So they're a cloud-based data uh, warehousing company, right? Uh, they were fairly uh, recently founded and they just IPO'd a few months ago. What we saw with Snow is that uh, when they IPO'd, they IPO'd at a certain number from a share price standpoint. And then we saw that share price start to really, really jump up, right? So if you look at their chart, they IPO'd around 249. And then literally within a few days, it was already at, um, hold on one second. They IPO'd at around 253, I'm sorry. And then they pretty much traded in a channel between 200 and 300 since they've IPO. Um, and they came out the gate a lot higher than analysts thought they would. But we're talking about a, a stock with a really, really small float. When I say float, I mean the amount of shares that are available to be traded in the public. And a lot of demand on the shares so that made the share price go up. So what you want to do is when looking at these kind of scenarios, the question you want to ask is that, does the, is this price sustainable based on the market's perception and the market sentiment around this particular company? And in looking at this, what I saw was a company that had a lot of hype around it because it had Warren Buffett attached to it. They came out of IPO and they immediately shot out of the gate really, really high. Now, Snow has not reported the earnings. And what I mean by earnings is that every uh, publicly owned companies, every quarter, have to essentially issue out a statement of how much money they made over the last quarter and also give what we call guidance, which is some kind of forecast on how they're going to continue to proceed as the quarters go on. Snow has yet to do that because they IPO, I want to say, in early September. So they're still early right in their process. However, for some reason, there was a lot of demand put on their shares and because they don't have a lot of shares, it made the price go up. In my belief, because I've seen this type of scenario before, I don't think this is this is sustainable. So I want you to understand is that October 22nd, snow was at 297, right? So it really shot up to around $300. Currently today, snow closed at 235. So we're talking about less than 30 days ago, this particular share price was at 300 and it's essentially walked down. It's had some ups and downs, it has some peaks and valleys, but it's gone down since then. So everybody that had bought at 297 had to sell at a loss because the share price has gone on or they're just holding on to their shares because they believe that this share price eventually is going to walk itself back up. So 297, it fell to 251, went back up to 272, fell back down to 250, uh, low key traded horizontal, hit another high of 265 and that was around November 6th and from the 6th to now, it's been going on a declining slope, right? So what we're looking at is over the past five days, this share price opened at 263, and right now it's at 235. And that's over the past five days. We've lost around $35 worth of value. What we're seeing with this particular company is that you're finding sellers of this particular company over the past five days at lower and lower share prices, right? And so when you're looking for puts, you want to understand how do we think that the market sentiment or the market's perception of the value of these shares is going to change? And then how can we leverage that, right, with put options? Because what is going to happen is that people are, are going to want to buy insurance policies against the fall of this particular stock. So when you own a put contract, what you essentially own is an insurance policy against that fall. And then they're, they're going to want to probably buy those insurance policies to safeguard themselves against that fall. Now, here's another key. Snow has something that we call a lockout, right? So they have a lockout period. So what happens when the company goes IPO, everybody that bought and owned shares before the IPO, they have a certain amount of days that they have to stay in the company before they can sell their shares on the open market. 
then they have something called a lockout date in which those particular people can now sell their shares in the open market. Historically, when that happens, if that stock is under a lot of downward pressure when that happens, right? What happens, you know, we talk about basic supply and demand. Then you increase the amount of supply. If the demand is consistent, it will normally lower the price. If the demand is declined, it will shoot the price down. Why? Because the supply of available shares has expanded. So snow comes out lockout estimated at December 16th, which is almost 30 days from now. So snow right now, currently, they're finding sellers for this particular uh, stock, right, at lower and lower prices. So for the past five days, at lower and lower prices, we found sellers for this particular stock, right? There has not been a demand on buying this stock at a higher price over the past five days. We found sellers. As we get closer to December 16th, and they increase the amount of shares available, right? If there's still not a buying demand on this stock, you're going to have another market of sellers and what price are they really going to be willing to take on this particular stock? Because the question is, what price did they buy in at? If I bought in the snow pre-IPO at $100 and the share price is $200, I'm selling. Unless I have committed myself to staying with this stock long term, I'm selling. But I may own... Let's say I own 100, 100 shares. I may say, you know what? I'm going to take 20% off the top, sell it, get that cash, and then I hold the 80%. So the question is, when they come out of lockup December 16th, how many of those people are going to be willing to sell their shares for that current market price or even a lower price, and how will that affect the share value? And it is my estimation and my analysis that it's going to continue to push share value down. So I bought puts on this company literally probably, I want to say, two weeks ago. Uh, to go out around mid-January. And my goal was just to continue to watch this thing fall and fall and fall and fall and fall over time because I always believed that it was overvalued. IPOs are very, very dangerous to invest in, right? One, you don't have any history of the company. Doesn't matter who's attached to it. There's no history. You don't have earnings reports. And what IPOs do is they attract a lot of what we call dumb money. A lot of retail people who don't really understand investing and they're ticker chasing. So they're chasing individual tickers because they want to tell people that I own this particular company, I own this particular company, similar to how people want to talk about how they own specific cars. And then as a result, they chase IPOs with no history because they're looking for that comment that's going to be the next Facebook, the next Amazon, or the next Tesla. As a result, they get into companies, right? And they buy in at 297, right? For a company that IPO'd at around uh, 253, right? It really IPO'd at three dollars, but it, it jumped up to 253 the same day, right? And so really, it IPO'd at 253 and just rose its way up. And as a result, they get trapped in these companies. Then what guys like me do is we come in and we put pressure on these people, right, to sell their shares and give them up, right? or to feel like they need to buy insurance against their share price because now they're nervous because they see the share price declining. And it's really the only reason why we can do that is because of the bad decision that they made at the beginning to buy in at too high of a price. Because if I bought snow at 200, I'm not tripping that it's 235, right? But the fact that you a person bought in when the share price was already overvalued is the reason why now they're in a position where they're feeling like I'm, a, I'm in a position where I have to sell. So when you're looking at a put contract, what I'm looking for is that I'm looking for a scenario that's going to influence and persuade people to sell off. How sustained do I think that's going to be? How consistent do I think that's going to be? And do I think management is going to try to do something to revert this? Because if you look at Snow over the past five days, management has not come out with anything, right, to try to offset this selling behavior. So, right, so over the past five days, they've been selling off. In reality, over the past month, they've gone from, we're at the 12th, so let's say October 12th, it was 249, right? They jumped up to 270, 297, and then from 297, they've fallen. Management has not come out to try to do anything to reverse this fall. Why? Because they don't care. So management may have a very long-term view. Their attitude is that we're not concerned with the day-to-day -day movement of this particular stock because we have a very long-term uh, forecast so the guys that got stuck into this the retail they got stuck into this early that's their own issue 
Another thing that you want to look at when you're looking at put contracts is the size of the float, as we talked about before. The float is the amount of shares that's available to be sold to the public. Uh, Snow has a very small float, and float is a relative term, right? When we're looking at other technology companies, uh, their float is normally going to be larger than seven million, right? So we're looking at seven million shares available to be traded on the public, but we got to understand is that 55 percent of those particular shares are held by institutions, right? So we take that the majority of their float is already cut in half; is being held by institutions who are probably not going to sell. So retail's trading, right? That other amount of the float, and we got 17 percent of the float is being shorted. So there's a lot of downward pressure on these particular shares because what? It jumped out of the gate too fast too soon for an IPO. They have no history of ever doing business as a publicly traded company. They never put out earnings. They never issued any forward guidance. No one has heard anything about this company and, and their plans for the future going into the next quarter, 2021, how they're going to deal with COVID, the whole nine yards. But we saw a lot of what we call dumb money run into the stock. When you start to really understand the markets, you start to really become savvy. You can take advantage of dumb money because that's what most of the market makers and most of the savvy investors do is they learn how to use dumb money against their self to put money into their particular pocket. So I wanted to give you this breakdown of a put play. And one thing about me is that I see a lot of opportunities for put plays. I see more opportunities than I have capital for. And I missed out on the 297 uh, because I'm very busy. I got a lot of stuff going on and I should have bought puts on this, right? At 297 right at that particular price or maybe at the 270 to 280 and just watch this thing walk its way all the way down right because with the anticipation is that as we get closer to the lockout I may be able to get a 500% or greater return on those particular shares so if you got any questions about this breakdown let me know if you want to learn more about how to execute these plays ask me about the highest paid part-time job in the world we're having a flash sale this week only after this week we're gonna move that price back up if you have any comments, hit me up in the comments. If you know somebody that can get value from this, share it out. This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, and I'll talk to you later.